this is Jamal Bowman of uh, virtue oh, signaling about climate change. Um, I mean, Ugh. we'll get into why this is virtual signaling in a second, but let's at least play we his to. Can own... we watch Lauren Boebert get groped again? <laughs> yeah, can we please? <laughs> Pretty well, please. actually, let me let me read the caption first. <laughs> this is this pretty caption. lame compared to that. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. It is. <laughs> but let me read it because listen, they're they're they understand that youth enthusiasm is low, they, along with the other categories. So he's specifically targeting, and I think this whole this whole uh, march was specifically targeting Gen Z to try to get them out to vote. But God. Gen Z, we see you, we hear you, and we support your fight in the climate crisis. It's our fight. You're a human too, Jamal. We have your back. You are a passionate, informed, and engaged. This sounds like a lot of pandering and like trying to butter them up. Generation, Remember millennials? You leading, yeah, you are leading the way in demanding action, and we stand with you. Here's why Democratic voters are listening. We know that climate change is a real and urgent threat. We are already seeing the devastating impacts of climate change from more extreme weather events to rising sea levels. We agree with you that we cannot afford to wait any longer to take action. The U.S. government must stop subsidizing its own self-destruction. And Congress, I'll fight to work to pass bold climate legislation, hold polluters accountable, and protect our communities from the impacts of climate change. Now, let's talk about this part here. Hold polluters accountable. Does that include the military industrial complex? Second question. Do you know a lot of uh, legislation, climate legislation to be specifically, excludes the military industrial complex specifically? So, and uh, Jamal Bowman is one of the guys, one of the people who have consistently and i think at every uh, uh uh instance have voted to send more money to ukraine and as we reported yesterday in the story i did with nick do you know one abrams tank one requires mm. 60 gallons of uh i'm sorry 60 gallons of gasoline per hour oh, per shit. hour it requires 60 gallons of gasoline one tank I forget how many we're sending to them. But if you want to affect uh, climate, stop funding the military industrial complex. That is actually the most significant step that we can take towards any sort of uh, uh, climate action is eliminating um, the military industrial complex spending, eliminating the fossil fuels um, and so forth. Um, I, I don't, I'm not going to read the rest of this nonsense, but I do want to play his video and this is literally this are these are just campaign events for them these are not at all serious attempts to do bring about any sort of change i'm not saying the people there there are people there that are that are want this to be significant change but this guy this elected leader who's voting to pollute who's voting for military industrial complex that is the number one polluter this is just campaign stop for him he comes here, shake a few hands, take a few pictures because he believes he's a celebrity, gives a speech, post it on his own Twitter so people can say, that's a climate fighter right there, even though he's not actually doing anything and actually working again. Are you with me? Oh, oh my this God. is not just about saving our democracy. This is not just about saving our humanity. This is about saving the only planet we call home. And it has to be the craziest thing in the world that the U.S. government actually subsidizes its own self-destruction. No. Let, let, so yeah, see, so you put that in contrast it? with what you just said. Yeah, of course. Can, can you pause it here for a second? I don't mean to cut you off here, but here, here's the thing, guys. Uh, I'm going to ruin the mood in three, two, one. This is the same event that Dr. Cornell West was at. So not only was he with the Democrats and yeah. corporate sellouts, but yeah. also Jamal Bowman is also promoting the fact that, hey, the U.S. is subsidizing. But, hey, aren't you voting for the military industrial complex right. as well, Jamal? And then finally, 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 folks, again, uh, how many times have you seen people like Jamal Bowman pander to this? And then also this video is one minute, 51 seconds longer 
than Dr. Cornell West's video. Okay, so that means yeah, more clear and more coherent that's crazy. than, than that's Dr. Crazy. West's video. All right, there you go. Just, just thought I'd throw that out there. How, if he was able to get this angle a video, why wasn't Cornell West able to get this angle a video? Lazy that's campaign weird. manager. That's, that's why. Lazy campaign That's weird. <laughs> but let's, uh, let's finish the clip here. You need David Axelrod That's in your corner to get a video camera pointed at you, apparently. It's <laughs> <laughs> the big money. <laughs> fossil fuel companies that are killing our planet. Oh. That ain't right. That ain't right. And we continue to give almost a trillion dollars a year to our military industrial complex. This is this guy voted for 150 billion so far to Ukraine. Yeah. Yep. Including hey, look, I mean, I, I say this a lot. Nick said this a lot. Nick fired off a couple of great tweets about this event, including one of those hotspot videos. Um yeah. the the destruction of the Nord Stream pipeline was the single greatest methane release in human history it was it was the single greatest man-made act of climate antagonism ever ever and <laughs> um if you don't believe that the united states did it then i have a bridge in death valley i, I could sell you um but according to our own intelligence the ukrainians did it and this weekend's not only did this march take place, but Zelensky went to the UN in New York yeah. and mm -hmm. started lecturing the world about climate change himself when our own <laughs> intelligence said they blew up the uh, Nord Stream pipeline. So this is just, you know, absolute I, gaslighting, absolute bullshit. And look, this whole I thing is just, the wound. whole thing is just religion at this point. It, it's so obvious that uh, these people aren't doing anything anything about this i mean that's what the planet of the humans movie was largely about about the failings of the green movement and how especially when it comes to democratic politics they have set up the very convenient foil of the republican party who they label as climate deniers well if the other side is a climate denier that means climate acknowledgement uh is the counter to that but acknowledgement itself is not action and uh, there is no action. And at this point, there really can be no action. Um, in, in that Planet of the Humans movie, there's a scene where the filmmaker goes to a college campus and he talks to this philosophy professor and he says, you know, every civilization creates its own immortality myth, right? Every society creates an immortality myth. And it's looking more and more like the green movement is an immortality myth for mm. liberals it's 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 this movement that says if we only replace plastic bags with reusable bags if we could only replace fossil fuel cars with electric vehicles we can continue our way of life forever and our society will never crumble and our civilization will never crumble and our species will never go extinct that's nonsense all species rise and fall yep. ours is on Thank the you. way out it will be gone fairly soon, not in 100 years or 200 years, but, you know, who knows? it'll be gone fairly soon. And that's not a tragedy. That's nothing to be afraid of. That is the world at work. The world mm -hmm. will survive us. The famous George Carlin bit, the planet is fine. It's the people that are fucked. It'll it's shake okay. us off like a bad okay. case of fleas. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, actually, exactly. to, 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 to your point, I want to share something to the to the screen if I can, because it's from mm -hmm. the New York Times. Uh, suspicions multiply as Nord Stream sabotage remains unsolved. Intelligence leaks surrounding the sabotage of that? pipelines. Uh, do you see it? Is it yeah. a link? Oh, the link. Oh, the link. Yeah, oh, yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Here. No, no, no. I, I actually shared it in the screen. Did you see? Oh, it? oh, right I haven't seen it. it yet. I had, yeah, that's the part I was waiting for. Okay, yeah, so now is. I see it. Now I see it. Okay, now let me add so, that. There you go. It is. It is. Uh, suspicions multiply. Again, I'm just going to read this part here. This came out. Uh, I forget when this came out exactly. Uh, April 7th of 2023. Suspicions multiply as Nord Stream sabotage remains unsolved. Intelligence leaks surrounding the sabotage of pipelines have provided more questions than answers. It may be in no one's interest to reveal more. So stop asking questions, poor people. That's what it says. It's not in your interest to reveal more. Stop asking questions. Thank you, Erica Solomon. 
So there you go. That's so don't stop asking questions. And it's in you're not in your best interest to find out why we have a huge methane link uh leak uh where the Nord Stream pipeline was once at. That's all. Just just I should share with share with you guys. That's all. Hey you'll see was at this right, event let's... too. Similar speech to Bowman, yep. Yeah. Who was at the who else did you say? I'm sorry I didn't catch that. Say that again. Uh well it was Bowman there was AOC at this event oh, as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 all right so let's let him finish out this speech I guess he's giving which is the number one contributor to carbon emissions in the world so as I was speaking <laughs> earlier so he does admit it and he does know it so how can you then vote for it that's that makes this worse. Yeah, it makes it worse that you can quote the statistic and know that they're the number one contributor as you vote for Abram tanks that spends sixty, you know, sixty gallons per hour per tank. Like it, it and then they, it's like twenty of them or more. Like it's it's so bizarre, and that's just the tanks. That's not everything else. They are. Literally, the biggest users of uh, fossil fuels is the military-industrial complex. Let's continue, uh, Jamal Bowman. They're giving a trillion dollars a year. So, as you know, Washington—it's not broken. It is operating by design. It has been designed for destruction. It has been designed for us to scratch, claw, fight, and kill each other because of our racial, ethnic, but you're part of it. sexuality differences. But the new American revolution includes every single one of us. Not just the one temple, one percent. Not just property owning white men. It's about everyone. It's truly underwhelming. Like sometimes when I watch these people, these these are our best that we've got in the government. Like that's that's supposed to save us. Like these are the people that technically have similar policies that have a terrible strategy not to achieve those policies. It's like, man, if these are the people that's in charge of of sort of stewarding us through this process, we are so fucked. And this yeah. this guy right here. Like for you to be able, like it's such a not a thing now to be a hypocrite. Huh? Vote a little for a little war. I'm 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 against I want I'm a climate change fighter and I'm voting like that dynamic. It's such a common common thing for our elected leaders to be able to be able to do both. Like those are counter. Do you understand that, Jamal Bowman? You are for climate, but the very thing that you are have your you have your hands in as far as voting for is funding the military industrial complex. Just bizarre. But any final words, Keaton and then Kit and then we can close here. Yeah, no, I mean, look, it's just such absolute gaslighting. This guy's up there, you know, rallying all these young people. And, you know, look, I. I watched some other scenes from that climate protest of the Sunrise Movement getting their chants yeah. going and all their fucking bullshit. And I got to say, I personally have never rooted harder for a tsunami in my life uh, than when I watched that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just it's it's horrible. It's awful. It, it that it, it is cult leader stuff. There, there is a very religious aspect to this that where we all gather and we affirm each other's philosophies and ideas, but it's not backed up with any action. And whatever action could come of it is obviously insufficient uh, at this point. I just want to address what Future Homestead said in the chat there. She says, if we're all doomers like Keaton, what's the point of revolution? Well, as I said, we're, we're not going extinct tomorrow. There's still no. plenty of life to be lived before <laughs> that happens. I'm not saying I'm not saying we're all doomed in a week, so there's no point in anything. No, uh, I think this species probably has another thousand years left. There will be deteriorating quality of life, but mm -hmm. I think we'll, we will probably have that in us before civilization totally crumbles. But I think we've already peaked, and I think we're on our way out. And I don't think that's anything to fear in, 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 in the long term. That's not to say yeah. you don't fight to make things better. 
in the interim, obviously, uh, we're all here. We got kids. We got grandkids. There's the next generation that we should work for. Um, there's a lot of spiritual value in that. But overall, I think clinging to this idea that we can solve the problem of, as some people have said, um, infinite growth on a finite planet. That's just not a solvable problem. You can't have infinite growth on a planet with finite resources. It's not possible. And to convince yourself as possible is to convince yourself that there's a paradise that you will ascend to in the next world. If that gives you some comfort, then that's fine. I'm not here to beat up on religious people. Whatever gets you through the day, whatever gives you meaning is, is fine. No judgment there. But these gatherings with such urgent where a guy speaks with such urgency about the need to save the planet while as cj and kit you, you know you guys all pointed out the guys supporting the nord stream bomber um and is voting for all these packages to ukraine so what actually are you doing there and what i'll close with and I, you guys are going to think i'm joking no matter how seriously i put this you're going to think i'm joking but <laughs> Who did America a greater service this weekend? Jamal Bowman gaslight in the audience there or Lauren Boebert giving everyone a genuine display of affection and love and charm and warmth <laughs> and pleasure. She gave us so much more than he did this weekend. Exactly. She wins. She, she wins. wins. Oh, oh now she wins. Hands down. Yeah. Hands down. Um, you know, no pun intended. You, you know, yeah, no pun intended. Indeed. You know, look to, to add on your point, uh, Keaton. Look, folks, um, everything that has a beginning has an end, including the human species. Okay, uh, yeah. there's there's been animals that have been around longer than we have, so it's a natural cycle. We have to embrace it. You know, when I lost my grandpa in February, he would say the same thing to me too. Like, Kit, someday I will be dead. And yes, everyone, we will all one day die from scary sharks to cute little puppies to you and me and everybody in between. We're all going to pass away and the human species does have its due date. We're probably around for another thousand, maybe two thousand years. I'll be generous, but these are cycles. Check out Fall Civilization podcast. You'll see the empires of old antiquity and you'll realize that the stories are shockingly similar to what we're dealing with now. All those ancient empires, they had their corruption, they had their high point. And then they had to decline, like how we're having our decline. This all happens. Make as much joy as you can in your life and try and fight for a better future. That doesn't mean give up because, no, I'm not being a doomer here. And neither is Keaton, neither is CJ. We fight for a better future as best as we can. And you know what? An ideal situation, maybe we can get off this rock. Maybe the human species survives for another 10,000 years. Who knows? Yeah, so Who be knows? nice to Elon. He's yeah, trying so, to get so, us off. He's so, trying to get so, us out of here. Yeah, yeah so, so, so let's be nice <laughs> to each other. Let's try and fight for a better future. Let's try and work with each other. Okay. And look, worst case scenario, according to Elon, five, we got five more years until AI takes over. Either it'll be benevolent or it'll kill us. So if you're on a date, <laughs> guys, gra grab that girl's boob. She might grab your Johnson back. Shoot your shot. We got five years left. Go on that adventure. Save up for that trip. Talk to that girl that won't date you. Ladies, talk to that guy that won't you. Get, shoot your shot. We got five years left, maybe, according to Elon. And that's the, that's the worst case scenario. So make life count. Find, just grab it by the boob or by the Johnson or whatever. <laughs> and well, you know, me, kid, Evan, you'll be happy. In all seriousness, that is why Russell went to Italy this year, went to India this year, because he is thinking there might not be too many years left where you have the opportunity to just travel freely and enjoy in, yourself. In, in December, in December yeah. of 2024, I'm flying out to visit Japan again. I want to see Osaka. So I want I want to go there. Beautiful. So awesome. there you go.